welcome back everyone to another video and in this one i will be basically talking about my experience with diy nas setups and the different boards that i have used as well as different hard drives and enclosures so there are a bunch of uh, tutorials online already that do talk about uh, this particular issue of getting a diy nas setup basically through a raspberry pi or something similar where a, a cheap DIY NAS does that does not uh, you know include building up a whole dedicated computer for it and using something like a single board computer so what you are seeing right now are the devices that I have tested out and that I use right now uh, let's get the boards out of the way and then we are going to talk about the storage solutions so I think I'll keep the hard drives away for now so these are the third three boards that uh, I have used earlier uh, and I am currently using so this is the Jaguar board this is the one that I am currently using this is the Raspberry Pi and this is the Rose Apple Pi now I'll go on uh, about why I choose uh, chose each one of them so the Raspberry Pi was of course the first uh, choice and the reason being there are a lot of tutorials on how to do this using a dedicated Raspberry Pi now I did always have used a Raspberry Pi 2 what you are seeing here is a Raspberry Pi 3 because I didn't have a Raspberry Pi 2 uh, to show on camera right now so my main issue with the Raspberry Pi is number one SD card corruption is like crazy uh, if you are running something 24 7 and there is a lot of data throughput SD card will get corrupted pretty darn fast uh, now a lot of people are saying that there are ways to prevent that but some of them work some of them don't work and it is always a headache when you end up losing uh, some of your data or you come home to find out that your NAS drive is not online uh, and is not functioning as it is supposed to the other issue is that even with the max USB current settings, the USB ports don't have enough juice to power an external hard drive. Again, we'll get to it. Now, uh, with this, I have lost at least two Raspberry Pis uh, with failures right around this point with one of the chips getting extremely hot and then uh, the Raspberry Pi stops working. So two of my Raspberry Pis have died uh, doing the same directly powering the external hard drive from there we actually come over to the rose apple pi this was one of the best machines that i have used as nas drive it was stable uh, the only issue uh, there are two main issues is that the network throughput isn't that much on a 100 mbps connection that means a megabit uh, you know internal network i have i don't have a gigabit setup so i have a 100 megabits uh, internal lan setup and on that i was only getting 7 megabytes per second read, uh, read. Uh, let's leave the right speeds for now uh, only 7 megabytes per second that is too low uh, at least 10 should be the nominal uh, and if you're doing from samba to samba that is from uh, Samba from a Linux distribution to Samba from another Linux distribution the overhead sort of cancels it out at around 9 Mbps uh, or a bit more but 10 to 11 is the nominal speed that you should get but this thing only got me around uh, 7 megabytes per second apart from that it was stable uh, a lot of read write a lot of random read writes were never a big issue the only problem being that uh, the software support was not great and there were uh, vulnerabilities like dirty cow uh, and other stuff that was still unpatched and it had a really really old and unpatched kernel running on it and there was no upgrade path or any sort of update in sight uh, there were no communication with the development team uh, and whatsoever so this was mostly a dead board and also it did use the SD card but the corruption uh, was not that much so coming back to the Raspberry Pi this actually had a really good throughput would give me uh, not will not saturate the network but will get view at least 95 percent of the complete throughput so this is great too now coming on to the jaguar board now this has been an interesting story it's been on and off uh, the jaguar board for me uh, i have been switching between the raspberry pi and jaguar board now the reason is that 
the Jaguar board runs off an Intel platform it runs off an x86 processor and these are like really really powerful stuff so what you are getting here is a hundred percent throughput I can saturate the network with it uh, I mostly get 11 Mbps on Linux and around 10 Mbps on Ubuntu uh, now my issue with this was um, that while uh, you power the hard drive directly from the USB port so it has three USB ports and while you power it directly from those USB ports it would tend to shut down or crash uh, while uh, transferring data at a very high speeds and extremely random data so for example if you're extracting something using WinZip on your Windows machine but you are extracting to and from uh, this device so it will extract uh, the data will flow flow from uh, the Jaguar board to my Windows machine and then back to the Jaguar board all randomly. So that stuff uh, did kind of overwhelmed the uh, USB power supply. I'm guessing because that is what the issue was, uh, and changing hard drives did work. So right now this is working really really stably uh, and really well. I have extracted I've conducted multiple stress tests on this and this is the most stable platform I could find. Let's talk about hard drive cases. So the first one that I have used was a non-external powered USB 3 uh, based external hard drive enclosure. So this has nothing in it. Uh, it's an empty empty closure right now. It's a really great enclosure if you are looking for something that is not externally powered that is not bulky. Uh, it can work really well with laptops or desktop PCs but not so much with single board computers where uh, USB power is mostly at a premium. Uh, again a few of my pies have blown out uh, the rose apple pie did manage to work with it but the uh, jaguar board didn't have some such luck and easily got uh, cra easily crashed while uh, i was running with this trans and uh, ha external hard drive so what am i using now this is what i'm using now this is a quantum zero uh, external hard drive enclosure it is again usb 3 powered it has a dc 12 volt in and well an on on off switch if you really care apart from that the one main thing is it's enclosed it will protect your hard drive and it can also support three and a half inch drives now i am currently running a 2.5 inch drive and i'll open this up and show you it's not the easiest thing to open up but should only take a second there you go and you can see that i have a 500 gig uh, wd hard drive on there so yes 500 gigs is not a lot but i can make do with it right now uh, it's working fine there is no issues with it uh, and uh, it has been working fine ever since now for the question this won't hurt the raspberry pi but then again i wasn't really getting the throughput i expected out of the raspberry pi and then uh, when i already had an external hard drive com enclosure the uh, issue with the usb power supply on the jaguar go board could be neglected and now i have something that completely um, saturates my uh, internal lan network and can work with it so what will I improve with this setup? I need a gigabit uh, network internally. That way I can actually saturate the USB 3 throughput. I can saturate the network. And if I'm going for gigabit, I would also need something, uh, some sort of uh, single board computer that does support gigabit. So that is a big thing. Uh, maybe I'm getting one, maybe I'm not that all depends in the meantime this is my setup what else can i do is to easily go ahead and get a better hard drive so even though this is 500 gigs it is believe me not enough there is a lot of data and i have a lot of collection of various operating system isos uh, and there is a lot of all of the videos that i have ever created are saved on my hard drive not this one because this is still 500 gigs but on my internal hard drive that I really want to export it to somewhere else and an external setup like this would be perfect so again something like that would be uh, extremely useful now what I have done here is uh, in terms of software is I'm using Samba on in all of the setups but one of the things that I really need to talk about is 
when you are uh, using it on Linux I would really recommend to go ahead and format the hard drive as ext4 I have this formatted as uh, NTFS and we I am running the NTFS 3G driver on all of the boards uh, but it still has issues it is not the default it is not a natively supported uh, format and I would really like to have the opportunity to go ahead and completely uh, reformat this hard drive as ext4 now the reason i have not done it that this hard drive also at the moment serves as a, a, a basic a portable hard drive that and can go ahead and carry big amounts of data on and that needs to be compatible with most windows system so when if i go ahead and plan to buy a new hard drive and have a uh, maybe two or four terabyte hard drive right here then i have this hard drive free then i can format that two or four terabyte hardware uh, hard drive whatever that one will be as ext4 to get some external extra performance and reliability out of that uh, so that i can use them with my uh single board computers that do run linux now on the jaguar board uh, i forgot to say i am running debian and since it is a basic pc build uh, there's no issues with updates uh, things get patched and i get all the updates that is fine uh, with the jaguar board i really wanted to go ahead and install arc linux and the issue was there was some uh, uh, the way EMMC is implemented on this particular bait rail device is quite unique and not really well supported on Arc Linux seems to work really well on Debian and I hope it does uh, that way so that is for my setup what I have currently is the Jaguar board and this external hard drive uh, enclosure with this particular hard drive on there now let's talk about this sort of uh, let's talk about the sort of nas setup that i would really like and that is to be a full base full full computer running at least 16 gigabytes of ram uh, and a basic i3 uh, again with free nas loaded on it because that is something uh, that is meant for nas storage two hard drives uh, with zfs uh, and then redundancy and all of that stuff but then again that doesn't come inside a diy or a cheap setup maybe diy but necessarily uh, not necessarily extremely cheap because then you have two hard drives that don't really give you that much amount of space extra they are just giving you redundancy which i mean my data is not that sensitive at the moment and not, not that uh, you know it, my data is not that important at the moment that i would spend almost double amount for redundancy so yes zfs does help a lot of ram with zfs does help you can cache some of that and you can have even higher uh, transfer rates so uh, apart from that this is it for now now the reason i cannot use free nas on each of this setup because free nas recommends at least 8 gigabytes of ram which none of these development boards have uh, and upcoming development boards will not have until uh, for our future where uh, 8 gigabytes of ram becomes really really accessible so this was it for my video on a uh, cheap diy nas based setup basically my experience with it the different kinds of hardware that i have tried out so again uh, you can use any uh, for pro proper performance you can actually go ahead and use any sort of uh, intel board now if i hadn't had the jaguar board i would have been uh, happily using the up board which is also a, a great uh, candidate it's a bit overkill at this time for the kind of work that i need i mean the jaguar boards barely goes over 25 percent of its uh, cpu usage and consumes only about 100 megabytes of ram apart from that not really much so this is it uh, i think if i have a much more powerful arm based computer i would have used it uh, but apart from the high key 960 uh, i don't have a lot of uh, you know powerful arm based systems now the high key 960 again does not have an ethernet port so that completely kills uh, the option of having a uh, lan based nas drive so lan is always good wide is always Good. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you 
sort of like this uh, guide or uh, my experience with NAS drives and I will see you all in the next one. In the meantime, do check out my second channel. This is a very small vlogging channel which I don't really upload daily at all. Maybe once a month or, or if you are lucky, you will get content twice a month. But recently I have been to some great places and I have a GoPro footage of me paragliding. Uh, and I think you guys should go ahead and check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.